You're listening to the Tom Hartman Program. And greetings, my friends, patriots, lovers of democracy, truth, and justice, believers in peace, freedom, and the American way. Tom Hartman here with you. And it's Friday, so it's time for our national town hall meeting with a guy I think of as America's senator, and maybe even one day America's president, Senator Bernie Sanders. Senator Sanders, welcome back to the program. Great to be with you, Tom. So, uh, there's always a lot going on politically. There's a lot that's going on. Uh, All right, so let's just... Let's just get to work here and rattle it off. Yep. Uh, I know over the last number of weeks, uh, we've had a lot of callers who are concerned about the need to extend long-term unemployment benefits. I am very happy to say, and we don't often have good news around here, but I am happy to say that I believe, everything being equal on Monday night, the Senate will vote uh, to extend long-term unemployment uh, for a five-month period, making it retroactive. Uh, after a lot of work, People like Jack Reed of Rhode Island have done a very good job on this. Uh, we managed to get a number of Republican senators. I, we need five. We may have five or we may have more. So I think you should have the entire Democratic caucus plus five, six Republicans give us 60 votes. We pass it. Uh, and this is something that is desperately needed from a moral point of view. Long-term unemployment in this country is really, really high. Uh, people have reached the end of the fi- their financial ladder. They have no job, no income right now. Uh, and we need to help them. Uh, what we also know economically is when you put money into the hands of people who are going to spend it, it creates jobs. So this is a twofer. It's a win-win situation. We've got to do it. We'll pass it in the Senate, I hope, on Monday night. Uh, it goes to the House. Uh, Republican uh, um, House Leader uh, Speaker uh, Boehner has indicated he's not sympathetic to this. But I'm not sure that we can't get some Republican support there as well. So let's keep moving on that one, and that's some good news. Uh, the next item on the agenda, uh, the Democratic Caucus, I'm an independent uh, uh, in the Democratic Caucus, but what I've been pushing for and what is going to be, you're going to see happening in the next couple of weeks and months, is a pretty strong agenda dealing with the economic crisis facing the middle class and working families of this country. So the next issue we deal with is the issue of pay equity. And that has everything to do with the fact that women in this country earn 70, 75 cents for every dollar that men earn. We want to address that. Uh, women should get the same pay as men. That goes without saying. So we've got legislation to move that along. Uh, following that, we're going to work on the minimum wage bill. Um, and what you have there is, as a nation right now, we have uh, $7.25 an hour nationally. Uh, we want to raise that to $10.10 an hour. Not enough, to be sure. We should go higher than that, but it's a start. Uh, and it will take a number of people out of poverty. It will impact, I believe, somewhere around 25 million Americans who will see a pay raise at a time when low-income workers desperately need a pay raise. So uh, that is a, uh, a good step forward, and we hope to have that on the floor within a couple of weeks. Um, this last week, I think uh, people observed a disastrous Supreme Court uh, decision on the, what's called the McCutcheon case, uh, which is kind of a follow-up to uh, the even worse Citizens United decision of 2010. Uh, these court cases are being pushed by the Republican Party, who want to move toward the goal that uh, Justice Thomas enunciated in his uh his uh, statement on, on, on the decision. His, um, re- and what that is about is what they want to do is to repeal all uh, limitations on campaign funding. So Citizens United opened the door to the Koch brothers and Sheldon Adelson to spend huge amounts of money uh, through independent political expenditures. Huge amounts. And we're talking about these guys spending hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars. What this decision does is make it easier for millionaires now to contribute more into the direct campaign coffers of individual candidates. Uh, so it, it gives more power uh, to the wealthy and the powerful at a time when they already have so much power. I think many uh, listeners and uh, viewers may have observed what happened in Las Vegas last week, where you had this incredible spectacle. And this is where politics in America now is of these prospective Republican candidates for president uh, kind of lining up in Las Vegas to meet with Sheldon Adelson uh, to tell him what they could do for him if they are elected president. 
and their reward will be if he selects one of them will be no doubt hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars uh for their campaign for president so we are moving very rapidly and i think more and more people are seeing this tom uh in the direction of a nation which is giving up its democratic tenets of one person one vote that we're all equal in the at the ballot box to a nation which is moving toward an oligarchic form of society where yet you have a vote and i have a vote but sheldon adelson and the Koch brothers can spend hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars on the candidates they want uh... and that is not i think to anyone's uh... understanding of the word what democracy is about that is oligarchy that is plutocracy that is the rule of this nation by a handful of billionaires and i think it's an absolute disaster so we're going to kind of uh, accelerate our efforts uh, to overturn Citizens United through a constitutional amendment. Uh, I personally believe we have to move toward uh, public funding of elections, uh, but we have got to do something dramatic to curtail the power of big money who already controls the economics of, an, of the nation, they control Wall Street and, and corporate America. Now they want to control uh, the political process as well. And the Supreme Court, of course, has made their lives uh, much easier in doing that. Uh, this week also we had some news about uh, the Affordable Care Act, so-called Obamacare. And, and the interesting point there is that despite our horrendous rollout, I mean, it's hard for me to understand how they couldn't get their website uh, in running order, but they didn't. Despite enormous amounts of bad publicity and, and 24-7 attacks by the Republican Party, it turns out that millions and millions of Americans are in deep need of um, uh, health insurance and, and affordable health insurance. So, in fact, uh, to everybody's surprise, uh, more than 7 million people have signed up for the Affordable Care Act, which is what the original goal was. We saw a real surge in the last few days, uh, and I think more people will eventually uh, be coming into the program. Uh, as I've stated many times, I think the Affordable Care Act has some very important uh, provisions in it, ending this obscenity called pre-existing conditions, uh, making sure that uh, young people 26 years of age or, or, or younger can get into their parents' health insurance program, reducing uh, prescription drug costs uh, for seniors, ending discrimination, uh, discrimination against women, uh, and in fact, uh, expanding Medicaid and allowing more people to get affordable care through the exchanges. Those are good things. But at the end of the day, we should also be aware that if, after all of uh, the successes of Obamacare, we still will have many, many millions of people in this country who have no health insurance. We will still have a situation where we are spending uh, by far the highest uh, cost in the world per capita uh, on health care uh, than any other nation. So we are spending more. We still have so many people uninsured. We have people underinsured with high premiums, high deductibles. So Obamacare, to my mind, is a step forward. Uh, but I believe we have got to go forward toward a Medicare for all, single-payer system, a simple system that will greatly reduce administrative costs, open the door to every American citizen, uh, and provide health care all in a much more cost-effective way than we're currently doing that. So that is an issue that is out there. Obamacare, a step forward. We've got to go a lot further than that. Uh, this past week, there was another report from the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, the IPCC, uh, who are the most knowledgeable people uh, in the world on the issue of climate change. And what they are saying and continue to say is extremely dire. Uh, they talk about uh, the fact that polar ice caps continue to melt, uh, sea ice in the Arctic is collapsing, heat waves and flooding are becoming more and more intense. Some animals have already become extinct. Hang on just a second. Please. This is the Tom Hartman Program. Senator Bernie Sanders with us. We'll be taking your calls for Senator Sanders, and he'll finish his thought right after this. Welcome back. Senator, did you want to finish that thought? I just wanted to finish the thought that the uh, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, that's the U.N. agency of the IPCC, has 
just said what they have said in the past, except they're saying it with more and more concern now. And that is climate change is real. Climate change is caused by human activity. Climate change today is already causing devastating impacts in the United States in terms of droughts, floods, extreme weather disturbances, freaky weather. Uh, and it is only going to get worse unless we transform our energy system and move to energy efficiency and sustainable energy. And that's their message. Uh, and uh, some of us have got to take that to heart. And it pains me very much that we have a major political party in the U.S. Congress, the Republican Party, where most of their spe- those people do not even accept the basic science on climate change. That's a pretty sad day. So uh, those are just some of the issues that are uh, taking place uh, in D.C. right now. Okay.